All right, what is up everyone? And welcome to another Birdies Conversation about becoming a student of the game. Angel City has partnered with Birdies on this talk series to discuss important topics for how we can all level up, both professionally and personally. I'm your host, Fish, but I am so stoked to introduce two amazing people who you may know who definitely embody our topic for today. Um, so first up, let's introduce our 2022 rookie drafted straight out of Duke University, uh, midfielder for Angel City. We brought her back home to the West Coast, and she is also a fashionista. Lily Nubet, what up? <laughs> hey, Fish. Good fashionista comment. Not needed. Not needed. <laughs> Well, set the stage for us a little bit. Where are you at right now? I know we're in the off season. What's going on in your life? Um, I've just been chilling in, in LA. I'm currently at the facility. Um, yeah, just coming in, training, hanging with some people that are here. Um, yeah, just having fun out in LA, especially with some family out here too. It's been cool. Nice. Training, family time, that's a good off season yeah. for sure. Um, and next up, join beside you is our 2022 undrafted rookie, NWSL Ironwoman, Angel City Defender, the legendary sock connoisseur for Angel City. <laughs> uh, Megan Reed, how are you today? I'm doing great. i um, glad my socks made it into the conversation. Usually everyone's talking about Lily's style. I just oh I just have my socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not just your socks. We'll, we'll show that collection in the 2023 content for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, for sure. guys, I'm super pumped for you both to be here. Uh, I think this topic's something that's definitely getting more visibility and um, a little more momentum behind it, and it's extremely important on the field, as you both know. So... In terms of your first professional season, what, do you, what did it mean for you to be a student of the game? I think the biggest thing for me coming out of college and just joining like the professional league, I realized that like I'm no longer, you know, like the oldest person on the team. And that was something that I actually really enjoyed especially being around so many people who um, have seen different parts of the game, have not just played, you know, in the NWSL, but abroad. And just hearing, um, you know, how they go about their day-to-day -day life and how, you know, they've developed as a player from year one in the league to, you know, jazz going year 10. Um, yeah, just to hear, like, their how they developed, you know, what their – I guess little details that they've added to their life has helped with their game and their development as a player. Um, and then, yeah, just like seeing different perspectives, seeing the way people train, um, the extra stuff on the side, it's best, it, it's been, it's been really cool to see and, and good to have that environment to help me develop, um, you know, now going on to year two to, to add some new things to my, to my game and my life so it's been it's been awesome it's been cool to I guess be humbled again and um just to I guess follow follow in these footsteps of so many amazing people yeah humbling humbling is a good a good thing and it's definitely easier when you come in it sounds like you were open to receiving the wisdom of the veterans and again just like in that learning state versus like oh I just got drafted I'm pro like I made it kind of a thing. I think that's a huge difference oh, that no. you, you approach the season with. Yeah. I mean, it's great to, to have people help you. I mean, if nobody's telling you how to do things better, it can be seen as like they're, they're not caring. But if people are telling you how to do things better, it's like, wow, you actually care about my development. I'm going to take it all in every, every chance I get. So it's been cool. I love that. And for you, Megan, I know it was a – Everyone's got different journeys back into the game, but um, I think yours is a definitely a special one. So how did that affect coming into this professional league and, um, you know, your approach being a student of the game again? Um, <clears throat> I think, like, for me, I think stepping outside of the world of soccer for a little while um, helped to give me, like, a lot of perspective, um, especially with what I was doing, um, just, like, working in EMS, working in hospitals during COVID, um, you just see a lot of stuff and it kind of helps put the important things in life in perspective, um, your family, your friends, um, that kind of thing. So that, you know, when I came back to the game, it was, it was a lot easier to let things go when I wasn't doing the best or, um, 
you know, just to not put as much pressure. I feel like sometimes when you come from college or whatever and soccer is your life and you have no idea what you want to do afterwards and you're like, I have to make this work. Um, like it, it almost makes it as if there's a lot more pressure. Whereas I've definitely felt pressure, but I knew there was something that I loved that I could go back to. Um, so if I didn't make it or I didn't love it, uh, there is something that, you know, I wanted to do um, down the road. Um, but as far as being a student of the game, I think honestly, my love for soccer grew more and more throughout the years um, uh, of the years I took off, I should say. Um, I started watching soccer a little bit more, especially like the women's teams, the NWSL, um, like those kind of leagues kind of brought me um, back to the game. And then obviously just playing for fun with, you know, the fire guys and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't think I truly realized how much I had to learn. Um, cause I think when you come from like a top school, like a Duke, a UNC, UCLA, UVA, like, you know, you think you're playing with the best of the best and like how much faster, how much more physical, like how much more can this pro league really be? And, um, it really kind of it hit me. It was like, wow, things move so much faster. So um, it was just taking in all the information of the people around me that, you know, really helped to um, make me feel comfortable within the league, like the confidence that Danny would instill in me or the wisdom that Vanessa would give me and be like, hey, I need you to do this or that. And I was like, oh, OK, like not a problem. I didn't even realize I was doing that wrong. So like, thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I think being receptive and, and hearing what people have to say just helps your, your game grow so much more. A hundred percent. I think perspective is key in that. If like you're saying, you got to step out of it and get that kind of bigger look, um, and fall in love with the game in a different way, which is very refreshing. And, you know, both of you were super receptive. You came in open, you came in like seeking to learn, um, and then when that's met with an environment and coaches and players on your team that also want to like feed into you too, like I think there's there's so much growth that happens. So in this last season, like was there any moments that you know during a game or during training or just like throughout the season that were epiphanies to you that really helped helped you develop this season? Anything that you can learn about yourself? Um, I think for me it was when uh, Vanessa left um, or was injured and then left and. I think I remember having a conversation with Dan and he was like, I need you to be like my guy in the set pieces. Like you're going middle zone. Um, you have to take charge and be the voice. And I was like, Oh no. And it was kind of one of those moments where it was like, you, you had to step up and, um, and it meant a lot that like Dan had, even though I hadn't played in four years, I hadn't really had much experience by the time Vanessa had to step off. And he was like, I need you to be this person for me. And then over the coming games to be able to say and pull me aside and be like, wow, like you have grown into this role. And um, despite like maybe some hesitancies that he had at first of me doing it, um, he regardless, like he still instilled the confidence in me to do it and, um, and to lead that back line. So I think that was a big changing moment for me is that like, like, having that that pressure set pieces are just such a big thing in the game and they can really change the tide and um I was always taught that you know you go like if you win the set piece game you usually win the game and so to have that pressure put on me um it was a lot of responsibility but it was so much fun and I I like felt myself level up in that moment that Dan put that trust in me mm, I love that that's a good coach right there that's awesome I can think of two moments, actually. The first one being, like, actually getting drafted was really cool for me and really, like, life-changing and mind-blowing for me because, like, entering the draft, I was so hesitant, I think, because of, like, the fear of, of failure, which sounds so awful, but, like, so many people, you know, when you enter the draft, you're like, oh, what if this doesn't happen? And my Duke career was also very um, up and down where like the first two years, first year I totaled, I think like 14 minutes and then sophomore year, like it went up just a little bit. And then it was like, wow, my senior year and my fifth year, like I'm, I'm doing this. But then to say that I wanted to like get drafted and play professionally, I guess I was 
the only one like instilling that confidence in myself. So then the fact that I got drafted to LA, I was like, wow, I think this is really just like awesome that this club has this much confidence in me to, to pick me in this draft. And that was like, it was all worth it. You know, like Lily, you, you put in the work and it's all paying off and you can do this type thing. And then the second one I would say was Portland was the first game that I had started because we had people out for uh, COVID. And I remember just like throughout the season, Carrie would always tell me like, stay ready. You never know when it's going to happen. This and that, like, I know it's cliche, but stay fit, you know, focus on the things that you need to focus on. And then going into that Portland game, I was so nervous it's like, wow, I haven't really played that much this season. I, I don't want to mess up. Like, I'm I'm ready. I'm prepared. But, like, this is a big moment, especially playing in the bank, like, with so many people and all of our fans. Um, but it turned out to be a very, very good game for me. And, and just having that support made me realize, like, I, I can do this and I can hang and I can, you know, get better. And this is where I'm meant to be type thing. So I think those are two, like, big, I guess, pib pivotal moments in my life and especially in my soccer career and my confidence in myself so yeah I don't think I'll ever forget those two moments really so and props to Carrie for having my back from since day one of being here mm. yeah oh, it's just definitely a theme of confidence are both of your moments right like when you whether it was from a coach or from a teammate that you like stepped into your own what and you knew mm -hmm. it I'm sure you both knew it was there internally but there's also always that struggle of fear of what if I'm not too um mm -hmm. so you know we're talking about student of the game and that's learning right and so before you get to that extreme confident moment what was a lot like how were you a student of the game along the way in those processes before you reach that ultimate confidence level I think for me I think it it came from the people around me um and something that I didn't talk about in that last comment or in that last question was you know, Freya basically giving me, you know, the starting position um, and like me being like, oh, um, <laughs> me, you sure? <laughs> and I like I, I was definitely that was something that I struggled with was that confidence because I wasn't playing. I was I knew I was in shape. It was more just like the technical, tactical reading the game. And so I went from like not having a ton of confidence in my ability to play and then being surrounded by, you know, players like Danny and Tyler and jazz, like the, and, and V like all on my side coming together and just being comfortable with them. And I think there is a moment where I even went to jazz and was like, I'm struggling. Like I need you to pick me up when, when you can and leaning on the players that have more ex experience in the game and, and more experience with those ebbs and flows of like, not every game is your perfect game. Um, and it just kind of helped relieve some of that, um, that stress that might come. And it wasn't that like, I would have been upset with myself for faltering. It would have been me letting down the team that I think would have hurt me a lot more. So just having that confidence, if I did mess up or, you know, needed that extra boost, there is people on you know, to my left, to my right, and to my center that all were just like, hey, pick your head up, next play, whatever it was that just kind of helped give more and more confidence. If it was a missed path, hey, do it again, you got the next one. Um, and I think having those types of people around you that just have so much more experience in that, like, in that process within the game just helps you to be like, oh, yeah, this is this is what's supposed to happen. Not everything's going to be perfect. And that's totally fine. And we'll rebound as a team and we'll, we'll come back from a goal or we'll come back from that bad play. It, it just, it's part of the game. I love that. So it's really like building that team around you to seek that wisdom, seek that growth and lean on and having the confidence to lean. Cause it's scary to lean on other people sometimes too. Not yeah, like absolutely. boasting like I know it all, right? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> what about you, Lo? Um, I think for me, a big part of like, the day I got here, I was so un overwhelmed with just like, you know, playing for a pro team in LA and everything surrounding it that I started to think about how I can be better 
at just like developing, not just as a player, but as a person also for my teammates. And something I started to do was not focus on like the end result of things and just focus like day to day. You know, today I wanted, I want to do extra like, hey, Aliri, Freya, you know, all the coaches around me, like, should I do extra after, before? Um, can we do film? I would jump in, you know, some of the goalkeeper films, see how I could be better, you know, playing as a six for keepers. So it's just like, I don't know, asking a lot of people how I could be better. I asked Daniel Ball, you know, our goalkeeper coach, like what he thought about the things that I was doing and how I could also be better, like six for the back line. And um, a big thing was, was to find or to seek out different perspectives. Um, and I also had going off of what Meg said, just the support around me. And those in the midfield actually helped me a lot. Carrie helped me so much just – the way I saw things, she was like, well, you can do this. Like, trust your instinct. Don't worry so much. Sav would be like, you can play that ball forward, and if you lose it, like, don't worry about it. Like, it's about taking risk. Like, that's how you get better. If you don't mess up, how do you learn from it, you know? Um, and having Danny there being just, like, an older player in my position, it, it was just a good thing to have. Um, but, you know, everyone on the team was so supportive not just people in my position or in the midfield. Like, Allie was great. Mads was so good to me also, just, like, having my back and showing me um, the ropes about, like, how to be a better rookie and how to learn from, from older people. And her being older than me, too, she taught me a lot of things. So I think we have a good culture here and just having teammates that want you to succeed and, and want you to do better, whether they play your position or not. Like, it's just about, you know, developing and, and all the love we have for each other is awesome. I love that. And I think, again, without a growth mindset that you both carry, like that all can be wasted, right? Or like missed, missed opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. So speaking of growth mindset, soccer, life, it's all the same thing, right? Being a student of the game, you're literally, it's the same approach to how, whether you're at a Fortune 500 company or you're start doing a startup or you're just passionate about a new project. So why do you think it's so essential to have a growth mindset in life? Um, <clears throat> I actually read a book called Mindset back in college, um, and it did, it was all about fixed versus growth mindset. And I think the growth mindset for me, um, just means that it is okay to fail. Failure is okay. Um, and I think having that mindset, um, allows you to grow because if, like Lily was just saying, if you, if you don't make the pass and you fail, like, you know, you don't realize where you're at, where you can go what you can achieve. Um, and I think people with fixed mindsets tend to shy away from anything that they won't succeed in or know that they will succeed in. Um, so for me, like having that growth mindset is, is the mindset that it is okay to fail. It is okay to not have it all figured out right now. And having that type of thought process and that thought pattern, I guess, allows you to make further leaps and bounds because you're not confining yourself to situations where you know you'll succeed. You have to step outside your comfort zone personally, professionally, in order to maybe find new boundaries or to find um, where your threshold is really at. Um, so to me, that's that's really important is it is okay to fail. Embrace failure because if you embrace failure, it's never really a failure. It's just the learning opportunity. Drop. Yeah. <laughs> Will, you can follow that one up? <laughs> uh, I mean, that was awesome. I would say the biggest thing for me in thinking about growth mindset is I don't really try to think about, like, you know, you can't change the position you're in or when something happens, like, you know, sometimes just out of your control. And the only thing you can really do is fix how you... I guess, react to it, whether you want to like sulk and be like, well, I'm not doing this because this happened or you're like, well, this is my situation. I can't change it. I'm not in control of it, but this is how I respond to it type thing. Um, and again, just like, I, I think I've been in that position a lot, especially being at Duke and not playing. Like I could have, you know, sat the bench and said, you know, 
well, they're not playing me and I don't want to like show up today and I don't want to do this because they're doing this to me and that isn't going to do anything for me in my development. And I cared more about like where I was going to go than to make like a statement to a coaching staff and like, well, you, you did this to me, so it's your fault, you know? And I think that's a big thing that, um, uh, I've done here too is just have that growth mindset and say, you know, the situation's not going to change, but like, how can I be better and how can I fix it for years to come type thing? And it's been, it's been good also on my mental health where you kind of separate the things that you can control and you can't control because there's, there's a line there where you need to realize that some things you just can't change, but look at looking at it with a, with a growth mindset is, is the way to go and it's a lot more happiness and peace on that side than having that like negative fixed mindset for sure i think with growth mindset it's like you're thinking of possibilities and you're thinking that you're being fueled by curiosity and your passions mm-hmm. and like meg like you're talking about with fixed mindset it's more of your fears that you're letting make you tense and tighten and kind of avoid things because of it and then eventually like kind of rob yourself of that life that you know you can live that potential you know is within you um, so I love that both of you lean into growth mindset. Um, it's clearly on the field, but what are some things that you do outside of, outside of the game that keeps you learning and growing? I mean, I like in a personal or in a professional sense. We can do either way. <clears throat> I mean, I think for me, like I, I lean into like world cups on right now. Um, and I don't like, I think it's a funny thing to be going through because I had all my family home for Thanksgiving for instance and I'm sitting there trying to watch you know two games at least two games a day because I don't want to wake up at two and five a.m um but like trying to catch the eight o'clock or the eleven o'clock and um I I don't think people understand like when Lil or me like sit down and watch those games it's not like just watching for entertainment like you watch the people in your positions you watch the people around your positions how they move so that like you're always taking in that information and understanding like oh my gosh I could move here in this situation and that would help solve this this problem completely um so like anytime you pick up a soccer game you're learning what to do what not to do um, and I think the other thing for me that really helps, I don't know if this helps you too, Lil, but like when I see center backs make the same mistakes I make, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes me feel so much better. Like, I don't have to be like hard on myself for missing that long ball or for, you know, overplaying that one V one, just small things like that, that it's like, okay, like I am okay. I am, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Even people at the highest level, um, make the same mistakes I do. Um, and then I think for me, like, I, I, I love training. Like, there's this new place that's um, near where I live uh, that, like, has a ton of different, like, AI and, like, situational-based training that I use. Um, and it's been a lot of fun um, just to get in there and to be so humbled um, by it, to, to be honest. Like, I, I stepped in and I was like, oh, this can't be that hard. And... I like Famous was missing balls words. being sprung at me. Oh my gosh. Like um, they have like different like ball shooters that come from different directions and it's like find the overload and there's five different pictures of moving screens. And I was like, Oh, this won't be that bad. Stepped on it. I'm missing the balls coming out, trying to find the overloads. And then, you know, a week later it's like, I'm hitting them and no problem. And, you know, becoming more accurate. And so I think like those, those two things for me, like on a professional level, help me to grow so much just investing in the technical the tactical off the field and then also being able to watch um you know people that are far more experienced or you know like at least experienced on like the international level and like just being able to watch them and to learn from their mistakes from their positives like all that kind of stuff um has helped me so much to to grow um i think in this off season I love your like appreciation for the process of being humbled and and struggling and then figuring it out. Like, I think that's the whole point and concept of student of the game and growth mindset. And you are thriving in that space. Um, it's awesome to hear you talk about it. 
yeah, it's been it's been it's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying it. I like I said, I think you have to embrace failure and, and those opportunities and just see them as like, a, oh, like and have that curiosity that you were talking about, too. It's like, oh, OK, how do I solve this problem? And like, how do I get better at this? And what ways can I make it easier on myself to be more successful? So. How about yeah. that? What about you, Lil? What are you doing in your life to grow, to expand, to learn? This is hard following Meg. You know, she really just touches on a lot of things. <laughs> well, then it should make it easy. Then you can just like, be like, yeah. oh, I like that. I don't like that. And then True. Pull what you want. <laughs> I guess, I guess repetition can be good. Um, yeah. No, for me also, World Cup has been like a big thing. Um, I won't say what Meg says, but I, I relate to that 100%. Um, but one thing regarding the World Cup is like, I have people texting me like, did you did you watch this game? Did you watch the six? Like this, they're they're awesome. Like the way that they move. I'm like, I didn't watch, but let me rewatch it. Like I, I'm so grateful that you sent that to me. You know, um, I watched like the Germany Spain game, and I was like looking, just watching their sixes. They're holding mitts because I had I had missed it originally, but one of my best friends sent it to me, and she was like, you need to watch them. Got it. Have it on replay soon. Um, so yeah, World Cup has been a good one. We watch for uh, not just entertainment, but you just can't help but but uh, learn and and just try to translate their game to your own. Also, um, outside of the World Cup, for me, yeah, I've just been training a lot and doing a lot of things that I'm not very good at, which is hard to do because I want to have fun and enjoy my time in the off season. But at the same time, like, I realized I have to do the things that I'm not very good at and it's not going to be so pleasant. Um, But it's understanding, like, you need to walk away from from your field and be like, well, I needed that. So don't be so upset that you weren't very good because you're taking a step in the right direction. Um, I went to the field with Carrie yesterday and we were doing a drill that she was magnificent at and I could not do it for the life of me. And she was like, well, why are you getting so mad? Like, I, cause I can't do it. She's like, well, we're doing it now and we can continue to do it and you're going to get good at it. And this is just step one of the whole process. Like, you're right. Thank you. I took a deep breath and we just kept going on to training and I left happier than I, than I was when I got there. Um, mm-hmm. So it's things like that where I'm like so grateful to have someone with just a different perspective and older mind telling me like, it's okay. Stop stressing out. You are so young. Like people, so, uh, also a lot of people tell me you have such like a young mind. I'm like, do I really, I guess, I guess that's a good thing, but also thank you for putting me in my place type thing. <laughs> um, but it's good. It, I, I, I love being young in the sense where so many people just want to give you so much wisdom. So I'm here for it. It's here. It's here to take, I'm taking it all in right now. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. You may have a young mind, but the fact that you're receiving that and just like feed me with all the wisdom, like that's wise and that's beyond young. So, um, speaking of, you know, you guys are heading into this next season. You're not taking this off season to totally take the break. You've been talking about how you're growing every day. Um, of course you're giving your bodies a break and mentally, mentally taking a break, but I know you've got some goals for this next season. So, Going into it, what are some personal personal things you're going to be striving for? Well, you want to go this this time? <laughs> oh, you're, so, you're so kind to me. You're welcome. Um, okay. <laughs> for this next season, I think the biggest thing for me is um, I'm trying to, like, as a player, I'm trying to get stronger, get better, get faster. Um, being a rookie last year and going off what Meg said earlier, just the players are so much more, you know, they're, they're so fast, they're so strong and coming from college, you think you have it figured out. And then you come here and you're just like, wow, I just got put on my butt during practice. And that only happened two, three, four times in my career at, you know, in the ACC. So it's for next year, my goal is, you know, to hold my own a bit more. Um, I don't like to say anymore, like, I want to play this much and I want to do this. I just want to focus on, you know, like, my playing ability and and, um, 
being a better player for for the team and just for myself. Um, so yeah, I think just to hold my ho- my own and and be like more of a presence, I think on the field um, during practice and just yeah, I guess all around better teammate. Those are some solid goals for sure. What about you, Meg? Um, I would like to expand a little bit like of my game and be more versatile. Um, like I know my left foot is something that I'm like not as comfortable with as I would like to be. So like that's something that I've been working a lot on in this off season. Um, and just um, wanting to be more like confident in my ability to find balls through the lines over the top um and just like you know like yeah those those are kind of that's kind of like my big goal is like just a little bit more versatile and confident in my ability to um find different passes um but I also think like um I would like to like really grow into the position that I'm in and um, be able to, you know, help the players that are coming in underneath me to experience the same welcomeness that like I felt, or, you know, I sounds like Lily has experienced the same thing, that same like welcome feeling um, and make it like a very comfortable um, environment where mistakes are encouraged instead of discouraged and um, where our team just, like has very clear goals as a team. Um, And I think we started to do that really well towards the end and just, you know, give ourselves a line that we can always come back to when we falter. Um, And so I think, yeah, of course we have our individual goals, but I think as a team, like, I just want to see so much cohesion. I want to see like the respect, the trust and the like fluidity of play kind of come in as, as it was when we were leaving. Um, you know, I think we struggled a lot in the beginning, just like finding our identity. And I think we started to find our core traits, especially towards the end in our style of play and, you know, how we, how we function together, both on and off of field. I love that. And you guys have me really excited for the next season now. I'm like, man, we got like a couple months to wait. (laughs) Why did I ask that question? You no, I love have. that. I love that. Especially, I mean, everyone's got their personal goals, right? But you guys both also had like, how can I be best for the team? How can I be best for our team culture? How can I, I mean, that mentality that speaks to our culture and our team and to you all as individuals. So um, that, that was really powerful to hear. So a lot of people want to be in your position, right? Uh, a lot of people want to be pros, young athletes looking to make this a career. Um, and also, just young humans heading off into any career that they're going to do as an adult. What is your advice to them in terms of, you know, how growth mindset, how being a student of the game or a student of life really kind of helps you find that success? Well, I think like that growth mindset, um, first and foremost, like we've talked about before is like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to, you know, try out different avenues and, and, and try to find new ways to succeed. Um, So I think like having that first and foremost is the most important thing. Um, And then I think the other thing for me that I found both in my career outside of soccer in my career within soccer is to find ways to fulfill like what you want to achieve in life. So something that I did when I was in college is I kind of sat down with my dad um, as he was having some hesitancies when I was thinking about like going back into the military after I was done with school or not back to the military, but I was revisiting the idea. Um, I had been looking at um, the military before college and it made him a little uneasy. So he was like, okay, let's sit down. Like what made the military attractive to me? Why was it something I wanted to do? Um, And so I went through, I listed the main things that like I liked about it. And those are the things that I wanted to have in my life in order for me to feel fulfilled. Um, And so I think going through that process and asking yourself what you truly find important in your, in your life and like what is important to you individually, um, kind of helps you steer yourself down the right avenue. And maybe you're not getting that fulfillment exactly through your career, but you can find other avenues to do that so that you are feeling happy and like you're doing what you want to do. Um, and 
so I think those two things for me were really what helped me like drive my decision making and has helped me to be a lot happier um, with my career choices um, just throughout this this process. And if it's soccer, great, um, but just having fun, you know, like having fun with what you're doing as well is, is really important because if you're playing a sport, for instance, for someone else, you know, I found that like I, I might have been playing soccer for my dad or other sports more for my dad than myself because there's something I enjoy doing with him. And it wasn't until I found my own personal like love and happiness of the game that like I found myself loving going out and running, loving going out and training. And so I think just having that that love like for yourself is really important and figuring out what makes you happy. I love that. So self-awareness is huge, growth mindset, and then just having fun going after it. Exactly. I love that. I love that. What about you? Nice summary. I got you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would say if there's something that you want to do in life, you should be your biggest advocate. Um, You should stand behind yourself no matter what. And if you don't believe in yourself, like how, why do I expect other people to do the same type thing? Um, and going off what Meg said too, like you should do things for yourself, not for other people. And figuring out what makes you happiest can, can be tough sometimes, but also so simple. Um, at the end of the day, it's your life. No one else is living it for you. No one else is feeling the things that you're feeling. Um, there's no one else that's in the, same exact position that you're in whether you know me and Meg are playing you know soccer for the same club it's not it's not the same like we live different lives and different upbringings and everything so I think at the end of the day it's it's about what you want and don't wait for someone to tell you to do something um so yeah just do it what makes you happiest at the end of the day like it's your life live it how you want it I like that taking like true ownership of it and seeking out whether, like you were saying, advice from others that are experienced in it. Um, but it definitely has to come from you knowing yourself first. And then you can lean on others yeah. to get that guidance. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, game changers are what both of you are. Um, and your game will continue to evolve and you'll continue to change the game for others. And we have Game Changer with the limited edition version of the Swift that rocks Angel City's official colors and emblem. We hope this shoe will inspire and support and empower you to be a game changer yourself. So you can shop at birdies.com, angelcity.com, and at the Birdie store down on Abbott Kitty in Los Angeles. Um, I just, I mean, this conversation, like, again, I don't think it'll, it's a timeless one because I think we are always evolving. We are always students of the game, whether it's on the field, whether it's in life. Um, and I love everything you guys shared about how to approach life in that, in that way. So thank you both for just being here, being who you are, and sharing your your journeys and your insights with us. Um, And as we will wrap it up, is there anything, you know, any final thoughts or things going on in your life that you really want to drive home or let our community know about? Um, I think for me, the biggest thing being a first generation Persian, um, everything going on in Iran right now, I just want to shout out all the women who, you know, are fighting for freedom and equality, um, especially all of like the the women in my life um, who are setting such a great example of just fighting for what's right. Um, and, you know, my heart goes out to everyone who is dealing with it and um, fighting for, you know, just freedom, um, just to expand on that and like what's going on. Um, women in Iran are just dealing with not having equal rights and not having the freedom to do the same things that men are are able to do. Um, And they're finally taking a stand on it. Um, And they're they're struggling. There's a lot of, you know, just violence and things going on there. So the best thing that that I'm doing and our club is doing, um, one thing is United for Iran is is an organization that that we're working with. Um, if people want to learn more, that that um, is an avenue or a platform that, that you can learn more about it. But 
yeah, I just want to say that's that's hitting home right now. Um, just seeing all the amazing women that are fighting for this is incredible. And, you know, just doing our best and my best to support that and, and show some some support and shedding light on what's going on. I mean, I don't think I could have said it any any different. I mean, I think, Lil, you've got um, a lot more direct connections and lines to it than I do. But I think, you know, if if we don't present, you know, a united front and in, in supporting, you know, like women for the same opportunities and freedoms that we have here, like, you know, we're doing an injustice. Um, and so along with learning more at um, United for Iran, um, I think you can also donate as well to the cause. Um, but I, I do think it's one of the major issues that's you know, within our, within our world today, um, that, you know, we can easily help support. Thank you both for sharing that. Um, I definitely think no matter where you call home or your direct lines are to, this is a, a global human fight. Um, and there's yeah. definitely the support from our club, from our community. And, um, again, let's continue to support that. Um, and thank you guys just so much again for being here. Um, being fully present and sharing, you know, your journeys with us and all of your growth. Um, I, I can't wait to see what happens next year, but it was a beautiful one to experience with both of you and I uh, hope you're taking this time to grow, but also enjoy and hang, hang out with your family and all your loved ones. So thank you. Thanks for making some time for us. Thanks, Fish. Thanks, Fish. Appreciate it so much. This is so much fun. Absolutely. <laughs>